He certainly has to be happy with the way his defense is playing. Looking to kickstart his offense right now. Butler, good look. Rondé Jefferson in the paint for two off the glass. Now, what happened that time? They penetrated very quickly. They got a man right in the mid post area. Easy little bank shot in straight on. Unusual, but went down. 9-0 run now for the Clippers. Puts them on top by four. Robbins on the kick out to Jaquan Johnson, to BJ Johnson for three. Off the front of the rim. Rondé Johnson, rebound and run. Right wing filling it. Butler off the glass, no good. Tip. Tipped again, Rondé Johnson, Jefferson somehow or another reached back and grabbed that basketball and then got it fouled as well. Tremendous wingspan by Rondé Jefferson to reach that basketball. This is what Greg Downer doesn't want to see. This is Chester basketball. Run, get on the offensive glass. It's like a pack of sharks right there. You can see him coming at you. Finally have to foul him to stop him. But a little jolt right there by Chester. They've not been able to run all night so far. Raheem Hall picks up the foul. That's his second. Gettysburg Battle Walks comes your way this July. Right here, Pennsylvania Cable Network. Rondé Jefferson at the foul line for the Clippers. I'm not sure the reenactment will be as good as this battle we're looking at right here. <laughs> it's always a lot of fun though, over there at Gettysburg during July 1st, 2nd, 3rd. 7-0 start for Chester in period number two. They're on top 16-11. Don't forget the three by Cotman to end the first period. Look at this trap. Juan Johnson maybe getting away with a little bit of push. Here's B.J. Johnson for three. Cotman with a rebound. Cotman from one end to the other up to the left hand. Ron Day Jefferson with the finish. Timeout, Lower Marion. What the 1-3-1 one, one at half court has done for Chester, it has sped this game up. It has closed down every seam that was there before. They're trapping hard in the ball outside, and they're making lower Marion really take quick shots where they weren't through that in the first quarter. Again, the Clippers looking to make it two in a row. A year ago, it took them to overtime. Mount Lebanon, a heavy underdog, but they battled Chester toe-to-toe -to -toe for four quarters of play, and then eventually the Clippers just had too much for them in the overtime session, and they won it by a score of 72-60 as Chester wins their seventh overall PIAA championship. That ties them with Farrell for the most overall state championships in PIAA history. Lower Marion is right behind in third place with six PIAA championships. So a tremendous amount of history on the line tonight. For Lower Marion, they could be the third team with seven, or Chester could be the first team ever with eight. Okay, here's the one through one. Let's see how they attack it. They have a high post up there. That's what they're going to use, then go right back to them. Missed outside shot, one and done for the Aces. Problem is, no penetration, no inside touches right now for the Aces. Rondé Jefferson again with that left hand of his off the mark and it's tipped out of bounds. And now the officials are going to talk about it as we have one official saying one way and the other the other, and so they'll talk about it. And they'll say it's Chester basketball and get it right. And with that, a substitution as Justin, Mc, uh, Justin McFadden will check back into the game for the Aces. Jaquan Johnson will come out. Darius Robinson from a long way away, no good, tipped up. And a foul in the process. Devon Griffin, I believe, getting a whistle going over the back. Neither team really showing a lot of patience right now in the half court game where you think they want to try to get the ball inside or into the middle and attack a little bit more. But both teams relying last two times down on the three. Back into the game comes Eric Wright again, one of their top scorers, one of their top all around players, and a returning veteran from that championship team a year ago. Comes back into the game, still looking for his first points of the basketball game. Rondé Jefferson out now at the top. That 1-2-2. Two, two. Dallin Bear back in there at the high post. Has trouble with the basketball as he puts it on the floor. And Chester will call the timeout. At the bottom of the pile with his hands on the basketball was Devon Griffin. That'll be a turnover for Lower Marion. That's their 12th. Ron Rondé Jefferson with the offensive putback. And I do mean put back on the slam, timed it perfectly. And that's what he can do. Again, six foot six, he can do that 
He can go inside, he can post up, and more importantly, Gary, we saw this a lot last year in the state final. In crunch time in the fourth quarter, he'll have the basketball in his hand, and he'll essentially be their point guard. Yeah, exactly right, and not afraid to take control. We saw him in the open court here a few moments ago make a nifty move to get down the court and get to the basket, so he can handle it in traffic, and he'll also take it inside for you. Very, very versatile young man. At the championship game at the District 1 final, he had 15 points and a Chester school record 21 rebounds in that contest. And again, he's just a junior. Division 1 coaches have his phone number. You can rest assured of that. Here you see the difference of what Chester has been able to do with the turnovers by Laura Marion, turning him into points. Here's a missed shot along the baseline by Wright as his frustration in his first half continues. Again, different looks each time down. That time you saw that Oh, uh, odd front look, but it turned into a 2-3 matchup again. B.J. Johnson fakes the three, goes for two instead. One and done as Griffin pulls away the rebound. Neither team really exploring the defense of the other team right now, both taking quick shots. Caught the baseline move, missed it. Right with the offensive rebound. And his miss is no good, but Devon Griffin's third attempt is good. I'll tell you what, that lane right now is no place for the weak of heart. War on the glass. But what Lower Marion was able to do effectively early, which was keep Chester off the offensive glass, has not been the case in these last few minutes. And here's a block foul coming up on Shanir Cotton. And with three minutes and 48 seconds now remaining in the first half, Chester has regained control of this basketball game, and the Clippers are on top of the Lower Marion Aces a 20 to 11 when we return to the Bryce Jordan Center. Cheerleaders just as much a part of that act. Right now, the act of the Chester Clippers are on the floor as well, as they are right now on a 14-0 run for Larry Arbery's troops. Laura Marion's last points came with two minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first period. And now with 3.48 to go in the second period, Chester has reversed what was then an 11-6 Lower Marion lead to what is now a 20-11 lead for Chester. And they did it courtesy of a 1-3-1 trap at half court that really speeded up the game. Lower Marion forgot about driving the basket, didn't have any post touches, and they've really paid a price for it now. Chester switches back to man-to-man. -man. Quan Johnson back into the game. Heem Hall also back into the game. He posts up down low and he draws contact. Both Shanir Cotman and Kareem Robinson were there. It'll be Kareem Robinson who gets called for the foul. That's his first. Team foul number seven. And so Raheem Hall will shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. What's interesting, Bob, about the psychology of this game, as soon as he went back to man-to-man, -to -man, what happened? Laura Marion attacked with his dribble and drew the foul, which they have not been able to draw the last few minutes because of the 1-3-1 trap. Raheem Hall now with three. He averages 13 a game. He went crazy in a game a week ago against Easton in the quarterfinal. He had 27 points, and in large part, that came at the front end of a 1-2-2 three-quarter court defense that Greg, Rab uh, that, that Greg Downer has not yet shown tonight, but he got a lot of steals, and it led to a lot of transition buckets for the Aces. We get a 1-2-2. How about a 2-2, a box and one here on Jefferson? And Cotton makes something happen inside. Jefferson tipped it. Jaquan Johnson ultimately runs it down in the corner. Greg Downer's third defense of the night. McFadden pump fake goes inside, more contact. Looks like they're pointing at Kareem Robinson. If so, that'll be his second straight. So again, I'll point out, Chester switches to the man-to-man. -man. Two straight trips down. They get attacked with the dribble. Two straight trips down, they foul. And so Justin McFadden now will step to the foul line in a one-and-one. Tamir one. Butler will check back into the game as Kareem Robinson comes out after picking up two quick fouls. Darius Robinson, his younger brother, checks back in as well. Devon Griffin goes out for the Clippers. Three in a row at the foul line in this quarter. That's where all of Lower Marion's points have come from. And again, it ended a 14-0 run for Chester. I'm a little surprised that he switched out of the 1-3-1 trap because Lower Marion had not really solved that puzzle yet. You wait until someone solves it before you switch out of it usually. So it's four in a row at the foul line, a four-point run for the Aces to make it a 20 to 15 difference as we approach three minutes remaining in the first half. Javier Butler, Darius Robinson, Shadir Cotton, Rondé Jefferson at the high post, and Eric Wright, who has it right now at the top of the key on the floor right now offensively for Chester. Butler has trouble with it, finds his way back into the hands of Cotton. Right back to Butler, and he travels. Turnover number seven for the Clippers. 
hesitation right now on the part of the Clippers here against the changing zone offenses. Every time down, it looks like there's something different to try to solve. Raheem Hall back into the game for Lower Marion. Again, B.J. Johnson with two fouls. Raheem Hall, two fouls as well. Two starters for Lower Marion. Greg Downer trying to nurse his way through that, hoping neither one picks up their second, their third foul. Darrell Johnson also back in the game as Hall penetrates, draws contact. It will be a block, and that's big because that would have been number three on Raheem Hall if that's an offensive foul. Instead, it's number two on Darius Robinson. Here you go again. Man slips for a moment. Just all you need to get to the basket. As you see, Raheem Hall taking it to the rack. Third trip down since the change of defense. Third time to foul line, and again, another make. And now that's five in a row for the Aces with that. And they've also gotten the Clippers in a little bit of foul difficulty. Both Kareem and Darius Robinson with two. Richard Cranberry with two as well. And that ends the streak at the stripe for the Aces. It makes it a four-point difference. But you've got five out of six free shots, something you were not getting against that 1-3-1. One, one. And you've also certainly gotten yourself right back into this game after it was 20-11. Dante Jefferson posting up down low. Shanir Cotman kicked it out of bounds. Turnover aces. Mike Robbins will check back into the game. Chester leading by four, but they have never really gotten in the sick against that zone where they scored points. was off their defense on the other end, and they got a couple nice transition buckets. Timeout called by Chester with two minutes and 18 seconds to play in the first half. See if Larry Arbery doesn't see, try and do something different in terms of how his team is attacking defensively. What he did before with the 1-3-1 was he sped the game up. He managed to get some nice turnovers. He managed to get some transition. That's where Chester really lives very well. But now they're slugging out again in that mired in that half court game. And that's really where Lower Marion has the advantage. And you're seeing them start to come back into it. As soon as he went to the man to man, Lower Marion said, let's go back to the idea we had of attacking, attacking, attacking one on one and getting fouls on people. And when you go to the free throw line, nobody can block it. And again, the foul difficulties for Lower Marion, as you said, two, two starters with two fouls in Hall and B.J. Johnson. It's much more of a concern, I would think, for Greg Downer right now because of Chester's depth. Kareem Robinson, Darius Robinson, Richard Granberry, all with three personal fouls, but the Clippers are so much deeper, it's not as much of a concern. If you are one who considers yourself a tweeter, you can Twitter at twitter.com, PCN TV. Big to everyone involved in these state finals, and a big thank you as well to the cable companies that carry the Pennsylvania Cable Network, including our good friends at Service Electric Cable TV and the Lehigh Valley, bringing you the sights and sounds of our state championship games all weekend long. This is game number eight of a tremendous weekend of basketball here at the Bryce Jordan Center. So what's he do with the timeout? Goes back to a zone trap at half court, a 1-2-2 two, two this time, though. And it results in a 13th turnover for Lower Marion. Cotman trying to make it happen, dribbling it off his foot, right back the other way on the ninth turnover for Chester. But again, what you didn't get that time down was a foul. You also got a steal, and you got it to transition, even though you tried to go a little too quick and lost the ball. Tamir Butler out of the top of that 1-2-2 two, two zone trap for Chester. To Reynolds, dangerous pass, but Hall makes the catch, and a great block by Wright. Eric Wright soars at 6-3 to come up with a block. Darius Robinson fakes the three, puts it on the floor, takes it inside, wave off the bucket, offensive foul, Darius Robinson, his third. Wow. That'll put him on the bench right away. Well, he took that to the rack in a hurry. I'll tell you what you see in this game. Such quick reaction defensively by both teams. You saw it in this end with the block. We saw it again down here with getting over to take the charge. Watch this. Now look at the block here to start. Oh. Big time block down there. And then you come down the other end, getting over there. Might have been a little Oscar work there. Might be up for an Oscar, but hey, they get called for the charge, and that's the main thing. Dow Reynolds is the guy that took the charge into the game for Chester as Darius Robinson picks up his third. Comes from Rashawn Dijarnet, 5'9 junior. And also back in comes Zamir Geiger. After a turnover for Lower Marion, Chester going to give it right back. Turnover both ways. Isn't it amazing? You watch Chester go back to the zone trap. What do they got? Two straight steals, but also two straight turnovers, so they don't make up for the new possessions that they created. And a timeout now called by Lower Marion. As the Aces have earned their second timeout. And they'll do so with 1.23 left to play in 
the first half. 20 to 16 as the scoring in this game has kind of slowed to a crawl. Large, in large part because when Laura Marriott has scored, they've done so at the foul line. And Chester really hasn't gotten their offensive game going since that timeout, the last timeout called by Laura Marion when the Aces did start to make the adjustments and get their game going. And the adjustment you're probably going to make right now if you break down is you're going to make sure there's someone on the side, someone in the middle, and someone opposite. You always want three near outlets that you can have against his own trap like that. So three times down, he's concerned. He's given it back to them three times. He's not had to pay a price yet the other end. He figures, okay, I get out of town easy, but I want to make sure we do a better job of attacking the seams of that zone. Our District 1 championship. Laura Mary and the runner-up, they have won 15 District 1 championships. These two programs are two of the best, not just in District 1, but in the state of Pennsylvania as well, year in and year out. Back in the man-to-man -man again. And another turnover for Laura Mary as the Aces get called for the travel. 15th against Laura Mary. District 1 teams have met in the championship game here at the, at the state final at the Quad A level four times now in the last eight years. It started with Chester and Laura Marion taking on one another in 2005 when the Clippers came out on top. Then again in 2008, Chester over, the, over Norristown. And again in 2010, this time it was Penwood falling to Plymouth Whitemark. Rolling inside for two more. The Clippers score again in the paint. Eric Wright with a big time hook on the baseline. They're playing a box and one. The last time down was Laura Marion. Eric Wright took advantage of it down the low block. Finally gets his first field goal in the basketball game as Rondé Jefferson knocks it out of the hands of Mike Robbins. Hey, look, they've got their big guys up front here, really doing a great job of trapping up there, using long wingspans. Back in that zone trap at half court, 1-3-1. One, one. Again, Butler at 6-4 and Jefferson at 6-6. Six, six. Helping to force it loose, and Lower Marion turns it over again. Jefferson to get a hand on it. Jefferson back the other way through the traffic, off the glass, too strong. Dowell Reynolds goes high to come away with the rebound. Hall to Reynolds in the corner. Reynolds has been quiet in the second quarter. To Dallin Bear at the left elbow. He puts it on the floor, off balance shot, missed everything. Final 15 seconds of the first half. Clippers trying to use it to their advantage. Look for the drive. Look for the drive coming up right here. Rondé Jefferson, the man they want to have the ball in his hands. Contact, blocking foul, going to be called on Lower Marion. And that's going to send Rondé Jefferson to the foul line in the bonus. You'll see Jefferson take a big jump stop. He ends up jump popping down on his rear end. Watch this. It's a big jump stop. He actually got hit in the way by there. Good call by the official. One and one opportunity. That's number two on McFadden, number nine on the Aces. Rondé Jefferson, as you see, one for three at the foul line. A one and one here. And can Laura Marion get a shot off to beat the buzzer? They will not. And so a game that started out in Laura Marion's favor changed to Chester's favor. And the Clippers will head to the locker room with a lead in the 2012 Quad A Final. It's Chester 22, Lower Marion 16. Mike Zambelli and Jim Wills with our halftime show when we return to the Bryce Jordan Center here on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. Welcome you back here. We congratulate Brad Cashman looking in the locker rooms here at the half as uh, we have an awful lot going on here right now. But Mike Zambelli joined by Jim Wills here at the half. And, and I really think, Jim, I, as we look at this first half, I think both coaches are to be credited. They've done a wonderful job switching their defenses, thus controlling the pace of the game. And both teams, well, Lower Marion didn't have a field goal in that second quarter. Both teams have struggled at the offensive end because of it. Yeah, I think what's happening, Mike, is it's like a heavyweight fight. They're both taking away what their best position is, what their best jab is. They're taking it away. And you have to be able to accompany that and make some adjustments, as you said. And that's a good point going into the second half for both teams. Jaquan Johnson for uh, Lower Marion. We take a look.
look at his uh, first half here. And again, just sporadic offense. Lower Marion with 11th first quarter point, but didn't have a field goal in the second segment. But uh, he was able to come up and uh, create some chaos there and get into transition. Yeah, he did a nice job in the beginning of making himself available, going straight up the court, of being aggressive and driving to the basket. When you take a look at the other side, you're going to take a look at Rondé Jefferson, who has become so aggressive inside, especially in that second period. First period, not as much. Second period, a lot. Yeah, well, Rondé Jefferson and Chester has uh, actually Lower Marion has done a very good job of keeping them off the, uh, the offensive glass. They have not allowed them many second and uh, third shot opportunities, but certainly there is one of them. Yeah, and that's the way they follow that ball in there very, very well. And that's the key to see Jefferson come in there and do a good job. And that's what they need to have happen in the second half. The other thing is they have a couple people coming off the bench. The bench play of Chester has been very much a big part of this first half. Foul troubles as well. We mentioned the coaches need to be credited. The players, though, need to make adjustments. We'll see which team could do it and come out a winner here in the second half. We'll turn it back to Bob and Gary when we return. The second half of the boys, Quad A Championship coming up. Overs. They have turned the ball over 16 times and keeping Chester off the offensive glass. Chester with 13 offensive rebounds in that first half and ultimately leads them to points in the paint, as you see, an advantage to the Chester Clippers. We take a look at the leading scorers, and certainly nobody's going to jump out at you. There's only 38 points scored in the first 16 minutes of basketball. Raheem Hall, the leading scorer for Laura Marion with five. Jaquan Johnson with four. You see Rondé Jefferson with five, and Darius Robinson and Devon Griffin, and Zamir Geiger as well. Zamir Geiger with four for the Clippers. And again, Darius Robinson ended up with three fouls in that second quarter and he will start the third quarter with those three starting five back out there for Chester that's Kareem and Darius Robinson Eric Wright Richard Granberry and Rondé Jefferson kick out Kareem Robinson fakes the three now gives it up to Darius has it stripped out of his hands by Jaquan Johnson it'll stay Chester basketball Laura Marion will start with Mike Robbins out there to start the second half along with B.J. Johnson Daryl Reynolds Raheem Hall and Jaquan Johnson. Granberry baseline for two off the rim, no good. Jefferson from somewhere, or Wright rather, from somewhere, comes up with that offensive rebound and a putback. Boy, Wright has a real instinctual sense for that offensive glass, and he put that big long arm out there and just pulled it in. Great job by Wright here again. It's a trap at half court. Four points now for Eric Wright. Again, that's what he does best, attack the offensive glass. Jaquan Johnson attacks him but ultimately comes away empty as Granberry pulls away the rebound. It hit the middle much to the weak side, but again, tough getting in there if you're a little guy and trying to score the lamp against the trees. Just like Kareem Robinson tried to do, but right there for the putback is Richard Granberry for his first field goal. Back-to-back -back offensive rebounds and buckets for Chester, and that quickly it's a 10-point Clipper lead. And that's exactly what this 1-2-1 one does, is speed you up at half court. Baseline for Reynolds. Well short, tipped up by Hall, ultimately Darius Robinson chick takes it away. See what that does? It takes away the penetration. Get your pass and take it the outside shot. Rondé Jefferson tried for the no-look pass, but somebody got a hand on, I believe, Daryl Reynolds for the Aces. And then last touch by the Clippers. Or Marion still without a field goal since the end of the first quarter. DJ Johnson tries to change that. Nothing on the offensive end right now for Laura Marion. The problem, it's drawing you into falling in love with a three again instead of getting any kind of penetration or touches inside. So Six, important. A 13 to five advantage for Chester in terms of points in that second quarter. All five points for Laura Marion. We're at the foul line. Two minutes and 35 seconds left to play in the first quarter. That was the last field goal scored by Laura Marion. And here's a turnover by the Clippers. It leads to Jaquan Johnson, who missed the gimmick. And the drought continues. Darius Robinson back the other way, off the rim, no good. And a push-off foul going to be called, I believe, on Robbins for Laura Marion. That'll be Mike Robbins' second personal, first against the Aces in the second half. Eric Wright toasting up, blocked by Reynolds, but fouled as well. Got it clean, but got him across the arm on the follow-through. That'll be number two on Darrell Reynolds. 
And it will send Eric right to the foul line for the first time tonight. I like the idea of Chester trying to get the ball down inside and get right involved here in the second half. Eric Wright, who's gone over a thousand points in this his senior season. And he, with this shot, he is now at 1,104 in his career. Chester is used to whittling away on victories, you know, winning by 20 to 25, 30 points a game. This is the carving here tonight that we're seeing. Heavy duty carving by both teams out there as Chester's carved out an 11 point lead. Just one that time for Wright. And tipped out of bounds. It'll stay Lower Marion basketball. Aces with 16 turnovers in that first half. But again, it's the attacking of the offensive glass, coupled with those turnovers, that have made the difference. Rondé Jefferson now out at the top of that 1 2 2. Juan Johnson, penetration off the rim, no good. Fight for the rebound, and Rondé Jefferson pulls it away. See the quality, even in the layups you're getting, you're going to have to really change things around to even get a decent layup right now. Darius Robinson trying to make that pass through traffic. B.J. Johnson knocked it away. And we'll see which way this is going to go. Possession arrow favors Lower Marion. If you're watching this game tonight and you're saying, this is an ugly.